welcome to the beautiful Chalk Valley. Um, first time at the Hef Festival. Yes. Uh, first impressions? I know you've only just arrived. Oh, but... it's very sunny and very full of tents. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I was not expecting quite so many guns, to be honest, but, <laughs> but it's nice that there's a whole range of things here. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, you say like a range of things. You, you maybe wouldn't particularly normally be at a history festival, but no, you No, they are. don't let scientists in. No. Um, <laughs> no. Well, it, I mean, it's what I, what I am a big fan of in life is that human human curiosity goes in many directions and they're all part of the same world and so i'm very happy to be here because it shouldn't be that you know you, you decide that you're either interested in history or geography or something else you know of course mm -hmm. they're all mixed together they're all part of the human experience so uh yeah so it's really it is really nice to be here and i i invite historians to the science festivals <laughs> as well <laughs> I'm sure they'll take you off on that offer. Uh, your latest book, Blue Machine, How the Ocean Shapes Our World. A little bit about the book, topics it covers. Right, so I've got this bee in my bonnet. I mean, I have, I have many, <laughs> but this particular bee in my bonnet uh, is that we, when we talk about the ocean, we talk about fish and whales and pollution. Mm -hmm. We talk about all the things that are in the water, but we never talk about the water itself. And actually, for an ocean scientist, which is what I am, yeah. the water itself is the story. It's this <laughs> massive engine that is doing all these things. And it's affecting where we go and how we can live and all that kind of stuff. And that to just talk about the things in it is missing the point. Okay we need to talk about the thing that's carrying them and see see what it's really doing and that gives us the context for everything else and so of course it affects history and human culture mm -hmm. and how animals travel all of that stuff but so that's the that's my bee in the bonnet that made me write the book it's like we should start looking at the ocean itself yeah rather than just talking about the things that it happens happens to carry along you talk a lot about like the power of the ocean as well um and you're clearly very passionate about the environment <laughs> where did this come from <laughs> well i mean so i i'm a, I, all my degrees are in physics okay. and so i just discovered the ocean relatively late, uh, you know, after my PhD. And it was very obvious, like, as it took, I, when I, I, you know, I moved to an oceanography institution, uh, I understood everything for a while, and then one day the people in my lab kind of carried out this weird frame and plonked it in the ocean, and I realised it was their gateway to another world, and that no one had ever told me about that world. And I was really indignant, <laughs> because I'd been that kid that, you know, read all the magazines and the books I was supposed to read, and the, you know, I paid attention. Yeah. And yet I'd somehow got to the age of 20, 26 and no one had ever talked about the ocean and it seemed this was clear it was obvious immediately obvious this was yeah. the biggest story on earth and then you know I spent my time learning and finding my way into that world and then you know when it came to pick a topic for this book I, I was like I can't let this go yeah. and yeah it was really intimidating because you've got a whole ocean and you've mm -hmm. got all these different yeah. perspectives and opinions on it yeah, where do you start really? where do you even start <laughs> so but I, I felt that this gap was so important I had to try Cool. You've got a podcast, I understand? Yes, Ocean Matters for the Bertarelli Foundation, <laughs> where we talk about all, all the things in the ocean. Uh, well, as many as we have time for, there are a lot of things in the ocean. Okay. Um, is there any other kind of topics it covers, or is it just it's completely broad? Well, the thing I realised, so after I thought about this for a bit, I... I thought, how have we arrived in this situation where we don't talk about the ocean? Right? It's completely ludicrous, right? Ever since the Apollo missions and we yeah. got those famous photographs, um, Earthrise and the blue marble, we've been talking about ourselves as a blue planet and yet we never look at the yeah. blue. How have we managed that? And I think the way, the way it's come about is that the problem with the ocean is it's very big and it's very small and it's very fast and it's very slow and it does all these things and there's all these different ways of looking at it. And so the situation we've got is a bit like that old uh, ancient story of the three blind men and the elephant you know one touches the trunk and says oh an elephant is like a snake and one touches the legs and says it's like a tree and the problem with the ocean is that if you don't look at all the parts yeah. of it, it doesn't make any sense so that's what the book does it tells stories from many many different perspectives that each illuminate a bit of this gigantic and fascinating <laughs> engine and the idea is that by the end of it you go oh, I kind of get it like I sort of see all these yeah. I sort of see the thing in the middle okay. but I think that's the only way to do it is to tell all these stories yeah. um, and it builds up a bigger picture perfect um, we've had like the festival of schools today so like hundreds of local school children coming in if you had kind of a line or like any advice um, for the future generations uh, like environmental wise uh, what would that be? We have a very simple job now okay. and it's to take what we already know about how our planet functions and what we're going to learn yeah. and learn to fit in with what it's already doing. We have to move away from this attitude of we're going to stomp across the landscape and stamp our mark on things. What we have to do is look at an engine that is already brilliant and rich uh, you know, rich and working okay. and learn how to dovetail with what it's doing because that is the way to survive.